Okay, I accidentally went off the thing. I guess that somebody, some force didn't like me talking about that. But anyway, people say that, you know, like in the E5 system or any of these systems that they maintain their integrity. I'm not saying that there are not integral aspects of them. I'm saying anytime you're dealing with man and woman, people color it according to their perception. Even the words coming out of my mouth are going to go in everybody's heart differently. Not because I'm saying a hundred different things. Not that there are not infinite meanings to what I'm saying and infinite ways to receive it. But because of our perceptions, our filters, like how we're programmed, how we're wired, determines a lot of what we say, a lot of what we do, and how we do it. So with that being said, I'm saying this. My period is a powerful time and a potent time in my life. And I refuse to believe that I cannot divine during that time. I cannot be an oracle during that time. I cannot manifest during that time. Um, I just refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that something that brings life, life and cleanses me is making me dirty. Doesn't make sense. Um... And I just refuse to believe that, and I, I refuse to know that, because people say, well, it ain't about belief, it's about knowing. I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. And I don't care what book you pull out, or what you say. I don't know that. And I don't want to know it. And I'm not going to know it. So, that's the end of that. You know, and people will say, well, you're not being obedient to the spirit. No, I'm being obedient to the spirit. You're being obedient to somebody's book. And that's fine, because books are beautiful, and oral traditions are beautiful and all of these things are beautiful but they're not absolute absolute truth is where i'm going i'm going to absolute truth absolute knowing and my absolute knowing is that anything that is naturally a part of me nobody is going to tell me that i'm dirty oh she's so dirty because she on her period no i'm a woman and when i bleed i bleed for all of us Every woman on this earth, whether she knows that she's bleeding for the whole of humanity, she's bleeding for the life and the fullness of her womb, the fruit of her womb. She is releasing her seed back into the earth. She is giving back that which was not fully conceived. She is not dirty or nasty or, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to let anybody try to, I'm not, and I don't know it. And if y'all want to say knowledge, I don't know it. I don't care what book you show me. I can see books that said that black people wasn't equal to white people. So what does that mean? Somebody put it in a book. And so they put it in a book because they want to put it in a book, but that don't make it true. And patriarchy has colored a lot of things. I'm outside now. I guess my mama saying, come on out into the night and talk that good stuff, girl. <laughs> So I don't, I don't agree that as a woman, when I'm on my cycle, I can't do X, Y, Z. I can do everything when I'm on my cycle. As a matter of fact, you want me to read for you when I'm on my cycle. You want me to divine for you when I'm on my cycle because the mothers, the ancient mothers are, are in tune with me. And it looks like there's a full moon. I hadn't kept up, but I'm going up under this moonlight and going to my tree, which I often... Uh, bring different sacrificial things out. There's a piece of fruit out here now, a coconut, that isn't fully going back into the earth. But, um, I'm constantly, 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 this is my tree. Y'all don't understand how much I love my tree, and my tree loves me. I'm going to lean on it for a minute. But I'm constantly, uh, I just, mm -mm, ain't nobody going to tell me that. Uh, defiled she's it's a, a dirty time don't touch the woman while she's bleeding please that's bs and people are very quick to 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 pass stuff down it don't make no sense to me and so i just want to tell all my sisters love your period love your ministration love the time when your body is functioning divinely as it's supposed to do you know how many women have womb problems because people have made us feel guilty for the sin of the world when we come to bring healing for that which has been torn down that's what we do we bring healing we bring life and you're gonna tell me that i'm nasty because i'm on my period 
Like I that was that's always been a turn off for me. A man who can't be around me the whole month and then when I'm on my period, he need a break. Dude, get out of my life. Get out of my life. Please. Go far, 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 far away from my life. Because you don't understand the lifeblood flowing through me right now. This is for all of us. And that's why I try to make it a habit to bring my blood back out to the earth. And I know that's very taboo for a lot of people and a lot of people don't understand that. But give your blood back to the earth. And, and, and you know, we want to sacrifice all these little innocent, innocent animals. And, you know, I'm not knocking sacrificial stuff. Do what you do. Do it how you do it. Do it how you live. I will say this, though. A being that has transitioned from the 3D, why do they need a flesh, anything, to move through spirit? Now, I'm not saying, I say that these things they ask and require of us because we need that, not because they do. That's just my opinion. Again, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to make it the truth, okay? And then it can be a knowing because you're going by belief. I'm going by no. No, you're going by somebody's book, and that's okay. This tree is my book. This tree right here, this little cricket tree right here says, Baby, your period is not bad. <laughs> Unless a seed falls to the ground, a fruit cannot grow. And there's a lake. It's dark. I don't know if y'all can see it. And the moon is up there in the trees, and I'm standing up under her. And I give thanks to my ancient mothers, I hear you calling. Ancient mothers, I hear your song. Ancient mothers, I hear you calling. Ancient mothers, I hear your song. And so I'm bringing myself to a place of calmness now. It's hard for me not to stand under the, the beauty and the power of this moon and not be caught up in the essence of her and the, and the prominence of her beauty and the fullness. And it just makes me think of my womb. It thinks, makes me think of the releasing, the releasing of the blood, the, the fullness, the fruition, the releasing of the fruit, be it spiritual or... Or, or physical, just the releasing, the releasing in love, the fullness of that, of ourselves, you know, and when things come out, how beautiful it is, how beautiful it is to allow nature to be natural, and that's what I'm saying, like, how is something natural nasty, it just don't make, and so I was saying all that to say, like, burping and boo-boo, and like, I'm, I boo-boo, I like when I boo-boo, it's a release, it feels good, why should I be ashamed of that? Why should I have to hide that? Why people are like you farting is rude. What what is rude about farting? Farting is natural. You ain't gotta fart, but you might end up with a heart attack if you don't. <laughs> Y'all heard that snorkel? <laughs> Such a nerd sometimes. You may end up with a heart attack if you don't boo boo. You better boo boo, you better fart, you better burp. And then you get your diet right where you don't have to do a lot of that, where you don't have a lot of flatulence and burping and belching and don't overeat and da-da-da-da-da. That's a whole bunch of... Maybe that's what's rude. Maybe rude is overeating and overindulging on shit that ain't good for you. I don't know, but don't tell me I can't burp. I'm going to burp. And I might say, excuse me, I might not. What is manners? Who came up with this shit? And we all jumping through hoops for... I can't say that. It ain't... Right, that ain't appropriate. What? Boy, please, be you. Please be you. Woman, please, please be you. God ask God, be you. Because most of the folks talking about stuff ain't right. They ain't right they self. I don't even know if I filmed this the right way the whole time. I, don't I think I had it up. This is going to be a funny video. But it'll be alright because that's life, that's love, that's liberty. I don't know, it might be upside down. What a good thing about nature is, it won't matter. Y'all still see the whatchamacallit. But I'm out here in the thick of it, surrounded by my ancestral trees and 
still in the spirit of oneness and unity. I love how trees grow together, how their leaves fill in, fill in and how they look like one tree even though they're individual trees and they give room to each other to grow in certain areas so other areas of the certain tree will grow and how individualistic they are and I'm sure they're the same or similar resonances but they still have their own characteristics and I just love the trees I just love being out here in the dark in the night it was 11 11 when I first started the first part of this video I didn't know I was going to talk about bleeding and farting and boogling and burping, but hell. <laughs> Evidently, that's what spirit wants to go right now. I just, I want to love without pretense. And <laughs> I'm guilty of, of having a lot of pretense and being a, a butt sometimes about certain things. And they should do it this way and they should say it this way. But I'm, I'm really coming out of that. I'm maturing. And I'm learning that. Somebody taught me that. Somebody taught me that people should do it this way and that way. And you ain't gotta do it this way and that way. You gotta do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it for you, how you do it. And as one of my friends say, and then make it the style. Make what you do the style. Make people wanna just be in touch with themselves. Look at the pattern of this tree. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like bricks laid. The patterns of life are everywhere. Those trees, that tree is smooth. That tree is doing its own thing. These trees not hating on each other. They're like, hey, man, why you got to have all that mold on you? Home so Homeowners Association. You need to get that mold off your tree. They just live. And they love ah, to be a tree. I don't want to be a tree. I probably have already been a tree. I don't want to be a tree again, but I'm grateful to the trees that are here. You know, and I was thinking that the other day, what is one of the stupidest things to do is to cut down the trees, to build a parking lot, and then put the new little bitty trees that haven't grown, to cut down trees that have lived hundreds of hundreds of years. That's how much we want to be in control of stuff. See, that's where that period stuff comes in, life. People want to be in control of life. We don't want to respect the divinity of life. That it moves how it's supposed to. Look at that cricket. See that cricket? It's one of my ancestral bugs. Oh, I don't know. Is that a cricket? You're like, leave me alone, lady. Yeah, it's a cricket or something. Somebody gonna try to be nosy. They see somebody outside with a camera and a light. What is she doing? What is she doing? None of your damn business. Okay, I'm gonna stop. That's not loving. That's, let me get back to my unconditional love so But I'm kind of in woman warrior mode right now, so maybe I don't need to be loving in that way. Maybe I need to be clear so that the vibration stays where it needs to and people don't move into the state of being of disturbing what I'm doing right now, which I don't even know fully what I'm doing, but oh, it's a baby frog. Look at that little frog. Little froggy, look at that frog! Hi, honey. Hi, little froggy doggy. He's not even leaving me. Look at that. A little frog in your own world. How does it feel to be in the spotlight? Like I'm not moving. I look like the ground. Leave me alone, lady. But yeah, when you look at that and you think about it, like what? Where does that stuff come from? Who comes up with it? Manners. That's not mannerable. And who cares? We're so restricted. And we've been so restricted that we restrict everyone else. And then we don't understand. And that's what I'm saying. want to control life. want to control it. That's what all this GMO shit is. Test tube baby stuff. want to control life. We don't like the spontaneity and the infinite eternal power of divinity so it's like i'm gonna and, 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 the, and the funny thing is that we have that flow where we can create and move similarly but then we want to distort it what we should be creating and how we should be creating and i know the word should i'm trying to get rid of but y'all feel what i'm saying like that's so distorted to 
mix the food. And they're teaching that in college right now, that GMO shit. They got it in the books. I took health and disease um, last spring. And they were talking about how it's such a medical breakthrough. You can take the cells of a cheek and saliva and put it in the rice. And then it can cure this sickness. And I'm like, what we could do is start back growing our food naturally and communing with, with it enough that it it actually grows what we need. How about that? Fancy that. Fancy letting things be what they are. But see, that's that need to control. That's that restriction that we have. So, you know, there are a lot of people that want to restrict the goddess. And there's a lot of goddesses that want to restrict the God. We've been taught that. We want to restrict our children. We want to restrict our friends. And I'm just, I'm just seeing the, the back ass backwardness of that and the hypocritic the hypocritical nature of that <laughs> be who you want to be but don't be who you want to be love who you want to love but don't love that person find what makes you happy but don't do that job don't do it that way it's just restriction want to be in control and so that's a lot to do with the period men who feared the power of the goddess, wanted to be in control, decided that it was evil. It's like our sexual prowess is evil. And men are still really conflicted with that. They, they're still conflicted with the power of a sexual woman. If you too sexual, you a freak. And I don't see anything wrong with being freaky. If you a freak, you a freak. I think freakiness is, can be lovely if, it's, if you understand the sacred sensuality of sex. I don't see why you can't please your mate and become whatever he or she needs. But it, it mind boggles me that people would say, you know, I want a freak in the bed and a lady in the street, which means I want a uh, sister Adama speaks on lady. That means I want someone who performs in the streets who pretends and who's docile, who doesn't talk back, who, you know, doesn't say how she really feels, who doesn't shake the boat, walk the waters, and, you know, that's not acceptable, but then, but then, I want a freak, and then when you're a freak, or you, or you please a man too good sexually, he's scared of you. Most men cannot handle good pussy. Or good loving, period. Most men cannot handle good love. Most people cannot handle good love. People will take good sex in small doses. It's like it's too much. She's opening my heart. Ah, why? Why, God? Why? That's a beautiful tree. Do y'all see that? Look at that. Why, God, is she making me feel so much? All my life I've blocked my heart and here she comes making me believe and love and life and making me want to sing a love song why 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 so it's funny see what i'm saying the restrictions women we have dealt with so many restrictions on our nature and then men wonder why when he gets a woman in the bed she's timid or she won't have sex with him because when she does give him sex when he, when he thinks he wants it he gonna judge her for it because society over time has trained him genetically to feel like a woman who gives him what he needs, something wrong with her. It was too much. So, oh, she can please me sexually. She can make me feel. She make my body shake like this. It ain't just a nut that I'm getting from her. I'm getting so much more than that. She got knowledge. She, when she touches me, I feel something in my cells. That even if they don't recognize that, that's what's happening. And so they shut her out. True goddesses, we watch men run all the time. And we ain't even got to sleep with them. All we got to do is talk to them real good. A few conversations. I'm not ready for a relationship. Okay, bro. I ain't trying to make you marry me. I'm just letting you know who I am, how I stand, where I'm at. And if you can't rise here, then you can't be a part of my now. And that's cool. Something light just fell down right there. I don't know what that was. So fall of light just fell. Good things. Probably a fairy or something. But you see what I'm saying? You see the kind of games they got us playing with ourselves? 
Her period is dirty. And she give good head, she dirty. And she make good love, she dirty. And she love too much, she weak. Oh man, it's sad. How can I accept the goddess when I'm not ready to be God? And that's what it boils down to. If I'm with a goddess and I'm not ready to be God, I can't stand in her residency without feeling inadequate. So now I resent her because this whole system has plagued on making men feel inadequate. That's why they fear your sexual power. That's why they feel your period. That's why they fear your ability to be able to give birth from your wombs. That's that's a fear. That's that's a fear that's been now now the sad part is what you do benefits them. It gives them the ability to be who they are. It gives them the ability to come into existence. It gives them that. And and they're a part of your birthing process. They're not excluded from any of it. Even your cycle, if they know how to act, they can be so supportive. Go get her some tampons, a pad. Go get her a hot water bottle. Go rub her feet. Hug up on her, hold her. Understand that she might be moody. Begin to speak so much love into her that it changes how she vibrates during her menstruation. Women are hurting and angry during their period because they're carrying the grief of the earth in their bodies. And they don't even know it. And they've been taught to feel guilty because the earth is grieving. That it's their fault that sin is coming to the world. You can't put that on nobody and think that it's not going to come out some kind of way. God, Goddess, did not give us that pain. We have been institutionalized into that pain. So we cramp because we resent, because we've been taught to resent our sexuality and our ability to give birth. We've been taught to feel guilty. If a woman gets pregnant, nobody blames a man. Everybody blames a woman. If it's especially what well, she should have known better. And I'm not saying, women, you don't need to take responsibilities for your bodies, who you sleep. You need to guard your gate. Don't let every nigga in your pussy. Don't let any nigga in your pussy. <laughs> let a God into your body. Love God. Love beings. Love men. If you're not going to love God, at least love a man. But these shiftless Negroes who just running around, hitting it and quitting it and don't know who the hell they are, and hitting and quitting each other too, let them, let them, let them find themselves. Let them do what they do. Let them do what they do. Send them on out there. Let them do what they do. Um, no judgment. I'm just saying, know what you're letting into your womb. Know the confusion you're letting into your wounds when you let people in who are not ready to hold their vibration. But don't blame yourself. And we walk with that blame. And we're taught that what we're doing is not right. It's not adequate. We're not allowed to be loving. Oh, you want to know why sisters are angry? Because she's been told that if she loving, something wrong with her. She's been taught that if she's loving, she'll be used and discarded. You want to know why she can't open up to you sexually even after you're her man? Because she's been taught that if she truly gave you the fullness of who she was and who she is, you can't handle it. And if you can, you can't handle it long term. It's going to be real quick. Literally. <laughs> real quick. Um, <laughs> so she holds back. So then you go find somebody who's lost, who's hurt emotionally, and then you breed that into yourself. And then you bring her inadequacy and her issues into your relationship with a woman who's trying to hold her own stuff and who already has her own issues, and you already have your own issues, and everybody angry with everybody and blaming everybody else but the person who's responsible, which is self. So at some point, Something got to give, something got to change, something got to be different. And we got to get to a place and a space where we allow room for the goddess to be the goddess. There's no reason to fear her. There is healing in her. There's a bomb in Gilead. It's in her womb. It's in her womb. She's coming to resurrect and restore the God you are. Why are you fighting that, man? 
Why you fighting that woman, man? Quit wasting your time with somebody who will not let you honor them and serve them. Do not be with anybody that you do not feel like you can honor and serve. And do not honor and serve long term anybody who will not honor and serve you. Touch them, heal them, send them on their way. When you see that they cannot, they cannot reciprocate. And it's okay, because every person that you get with ain't supposed to reciprocate. Some of them are coming just for healing. But don't tie yourself down and don't make yourself a savior because you feel guilty and because somebody has taught you restriction. And so you question yourself and your own moves and your own motives. And y'all don't know where none of this is coming from, so I'm just letting it flow right now. I think the stream is about to stop because <laughs> I've been walking and talking out here for a minute, but I'm just saying, we are powerful. God, you're powerful. Why are you trying to water yourself down? Why are you trying to water her down? Let her love you like only she can. Don't block out love. I'm telling y'all, don't block out love. Love is the salvation. You want to know what the Savior is? It's love. That's where the healing is going to come. That's where the restoration of the earth is going to come. That's where the building of your dreams and your manifestation come. It comes through love. There's no other way for it to happen. No other way. No other power can go into where we have been fragmented on a cellular level. On a cosmic level, you have been, shh, hey, shh, so loud. There's no other place where you can be fragmented on a cosmic level, on a spiritual level. There's no other way and no other place where you can do that and not have to have love to put that and heal that back together this isn't just now they've been doing this for generations upon generations upon generations and we have perpetuated that in our lives because of how we handle ourselves and how we handle each other so we must come to terms with that how do we bring healing we accept and embrace the goddess we accept and embrace the god we do not pit them against each other we do not say one is greater or less than the other because they're not have different functions both are vital to the life force now masculine and feminine energy is not concerned with man and woman it's in both of you man and woman is physical that's 3d masculine and feminine i don't know what that is that's i don't even want to try to number it or label it it's astronomic So at some point, we got to get to a space and a place where we understand the resonance, the residency that we have in each other. And we have to quit shutting down the power of the goddess. We have to quit confusing her about her sexuality. Brothers, you have confused her so much, you've confused yourself about your own sexuality. And I ain't mad at y'all because it's choice. And we all got it. Out here hitting a whole bunch of women don't make you no home run winner. I promise you. All it makes you is more distorted and more dysfunctional. And you get caught up in your dysfunction. And now you don't know how to function in a loving, healthy environment. Because if it's not taking from you, when it starts getting where, where you're starting to be open and it's flowing because you're so used to being depleted. When you start feeling the fullness, you get scared. And you run and you hide. And it's unfortunate for all of us because we need you to stay in position. Goddess, we need you to stay in position. It, it, it's a joint effort. All of it's relevant. All of it matters. All of it matters. There's nothing that you can do that you're not getting away with nothing. None of it. You're not getting away with it. It's all matters. It all matters all of it matters all of it matters what you're thinking matters what you're doing matters who you're doing it with matters don't let this world make you think that this shit is casual it's it's it's, it's very strategic to make you take it very lightly nothing is light about who comes into your body 
Nothing's light about that. Nothing is light about who comes into your sacred space. I'm not even talking about your body. I'm talking about your heart center, your chakras, your third eye, your crown, who you let into that space. Nothing is light or casual about that. Let them, don't let them fool you that the shit is okay. It's not. It's not okay. You need to know it all matters. So what do you really want? That's what you have to ask yourself. And what are you doing, willing to do to create that in you? Not in him, not in her, but in you. And as you create that in you, you draw it out of others. Not creating nothing. That's going back to restriction and control. That's going back to the period is dirty. It's not. And we wonder why we're impotent and why we have so much sexual dysfunction and why we can't move forward in power. And that's not across the board. You have women who cannot release sexually, even with a man they love, because they're afraid to open and be that vulnerable. Because she's been told if she ever actually allows herself freedom sexually, she's a whore. She a freak. She not marriage material. Nobody's going to want her. So that's, it ain't that you can't lay down the pipe, brother. And then you so used to laying pipe, you don't know how to lay the heart. Quit laying the pipe and lay her heart. Lay something in her heart. Lay something on her spirit that lets her know that she's not just another number, another notch in your bed, belt, another person where you're trying to build up your inadequacy through her womb. And then you wonder why your seeds are coming out and they don't know how to act and behave. They're not free. They're not thinking on higher levels. How can they when so much guilt and shame has created them? When they're coming from a place of pain before they're even born. And then both of you are resentful of them even being here because it's attached you to somebody that you didn't want to be with in the first place. That's why y'all need to quit sleeping with folks you don't want to be with. If you cannot see a future with that man, if you cannot see a future with that woman, if you cannot see building a nation with them, if you cannot see raising a child with them, stop fucking. Period. I don't care what kind of condom you're using. Stop putting your being in someone that you don't want to be like or you don't want to be with. What is wrong with you? How does that make sense? Jack offers. And then be careful with that because you don't know what entity's coming through that. And especially if you're watching porn. <laughs> Ooh, my man, y'all so dysfunctional on that porn tip. Ooh, yeah, be careful with that. Might find you can't even have sex with a woman no more. Not in real life. You gotta watch the screen and jack off. Because it, 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 watching what you watch in those images have rewired you to where being with someone physically is not as appealing or as satisfying. And I mean, they got all kinds of studies showing that it, it causes frontal lobe issues in your mind. Sexual distortion and dysfunction. The sacred things of our lives have been misconstrued so much and we're buying into the program. I ain't telling you don't have sex, have sex. I'm telling you know your worth, man and woman. Know your worth, man and woman. You should be worth more than laying with just any woman. Not every woman should be able to just sit on your dick. I was telling one of my friends, I was like, some of y'all need to get y'all dick a break. <laughs> y'all need to have a dick restriction, a dick, uh, what did I say, a dick, uh, put your dick on hiatus. It's tired. You just sticking it in the stuff and sticking it everywhere and rubbing it all the time. Give it a break. <laughs> it needs a break. It deserves a break today. And that's all I had to say about that. I think I, I'll wind down. Uh, would y'all prefer I say phallus? Give your phallus a break. Give your penis a break. Give it a, some time off. 
Why don't you figure yourself out a little bit? Men jump from woman to woman to woman. They never sit their ass down. Sit down sometimes. Figure out what's going on in you so you can quit blaming women for why you're not the man you ought to be on your own. Yeah, she going to help you. She going to lift you. She going to birth some stuff in you. But she can't birth what you're not ready to conceive. How about that? She can't birth what you're not willing to see yourself as. She can't birth through your inadequacy. You will block your greatness every time because you'll get stuck on where you feel inadequate and shameful and guilty. Why do you feel shameful, inadequate, and guilty? Because you've been dealing in places you didn't need to with your body, and now that stuff is on you, and you got all these spirits on you and all these in-